This should have never happened. A father's search for answers leading him into a house of horrors. Nobody prepared for what was inside or the potential evidence missed by investigators. That's them. That's them. That's them. That's them. That's them. Yep. Okay. Hold on. Yep. Don't touch him. Don't move him. Along with Adria Goins, I'm Kevin Ogle, and tonight we're following blockbuster developments in that ghastly murder-suicide that shocked the state and nation, leaving seven people dead, including five children. Brittany Brewer, Ivy Webster, Tiffany Guess, Michael Mayo, and Riley Allen, all between the ages of 13 and 17, along with Holly Guess, each shot to death. Investigators have confirmed convicted sex offender Jesse McFadden killed those six victims then himself. Earlier this week, law enforcement released the home where the murders occurred, giving it back to the property owner. And as of Tuesday afternoon, there was no longer an active investigation at this location. In an effort to figure out what led up to this horrific murder-suicide, the families of the victims have launched their own search for answers. The parents of teenager Ivy Webster wanted to go through the crime scene, hoping they could find something that would explain what happened. Once the crime tape was removed from the home and the scene released by law enforcement, the family went inside. They left yesterday devastated by what they found. News Force Kaylee Olivas with us the entire time. She joins us with an exclusive. Well, Adria, Kevin, we first want to warn you, the images you're about to see from inside the home are disturbing. It was hard to watch Ivy's family as they discovered what they believe is crucial evidence that was left behind by law enforcement. In a matter of minutes, they found their own daughter's cell phone tucked away in a cabinet, and that was just the beginning. Now they're wondering whether law enforcement dropped the ball. We can't have parents go through what we have. I'm angry. This should have never happened. His daughter Ivy was only 14 years old when Jesse McFadden murdered her. Old Mulgee police say Ivy died from a gunshot wound to the head. Her family has zero answers, couldn't say goodbye, and has no closure. So now, they're looking for it. I feel that my daughter even right now, is standing behind me, telling me to keep going, keep doing this. Phone or phone case. Thursday afternoon, News 4 was invited by Webster and his family to take a closer look at where his daughter took her last breath. Behind these walls, the family found sex and bondage devices. In one of the bedrooms were restraints bolted into the bed frame. There was also a shelf filled with books about witchcraft. 10 feet away in the kitchen, another restraint with chains and locks still attached. Although there were reportedly four bodies found in this home, we didn't see any blood stains, no blood splatters. In the back room, the most shocking find of it all, crucial items that had not been collected. That's them. That's them. Okay, that's that hers? Yep. Okay, hold on. Yep. Don't touch them, don't yep. move them. Ivy Webster's cell phone was tucked away in a laundry room cabinet, along with two other cell phones and two laptops. In the same room, syringes, what appears to be drug residue, and various items the family believes was used to torture their daughter before she was murdered. None of it collected by law enforcement until this family called the Oak Mulgee County Sheriff's Office and asked them to come back to the home and retrieve these items. There you go. Pictures were snapped and the items finally collected, but not without a brief explanation as to why it hadn't been done before. I want more done. The problem is, we don't know what else to do. Like, there's a story to be told here. Right. We don't know what happened. Don't exactly. know what else to do. I'm going to say and this. We don't have the only person that can tell us what happened is dead. But we can try to piece it together. And I want to say this was not done right. I, no crime scene tape. We are open to any suggestions you all can I'm give. I'm saying this. They didn't do their job, and the whole world's going to know it. But what, what would this accomplish? I'm a grieving parent that my daughter got raped and murdered. And you're telling me right now that I don't have a right to know what happened? The story's right here. It's right here, and it's still sitting here. 
Still! Disgusted with the investigation into his daughter's murder, he only saw more uncollected evidence on his walkout. Another phone in the top drawer of a nightstand, several computer towers, and a check made out to a local storage company still sitting in plain sight. I'm upset, healing, trying to heal, still confused, still a lot of answers that need to be given. We've spent the day trying to find out why the cell phones, why the laptops, and why the other evidence was left behind. We were told by a sheriff's investigator in Okmulgee County that they were only responsible for searching the property, not the house. He said the house was the sole responsibility of the OSBI, but the OSBI confirms its investigators were in the house. But they tell us those investigators were only providing assistance to the Okmulgee Police Department. Today, neither the Okmulgee Police Department, nor the Sheriff's Office, nor the DA's Office would comment on our story. The OSBI did issue a statement saying they will continue to support and assist our law enforcement partners and grieve with the families of this horrible event. The investigation is still ongoing.